Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to the first day of the month of December on this Wednesday of the first week of Advent. I'm Father Michael, along with the rest of our team, gathered here to lead us in prayer. Welcome to the God Minute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall declare your praise. Psalm 51 Your Forgiveness. O oh God, may the measure of your eternal love be the measure of your mercy. And may the measure of your mercy be sufficient to blot out my great sins and wrongdoings. I know that nothing can be hidden from you and beg for your loving forgiveness. I have failed, O Lord, and my failures weigh heavily upon my heart. But you know what they are, O God, and how far I have fallen short of your standards and expectations. Purge me of my guilt, O Lord. Heal the hurts of those who have been afflicted by my failures. Revive my flagging spirit, O God. It is only then that my tongue will be set free to sing your praises. It is only then that I can have a deep and meaningful relationship with my brothers and sisters and communicate to them the message of your reconciling love. Restore to me the joy and assurance of a right relationship with you. Reinstate me in your purposes and help me avoid the snares and pitfalls along the earthly path. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verse 4. As it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, someone is shouting in the desert, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. John the Baptist is the one in today's scripture who was shouting in the desert. His call to prepare was not just for the people of old, The call to get the road ready is for all of us. What does it mean to prepare the way? What should our preparation for this time of the year look like? Well, if we took our cues from retail stores, we'd have started putting up our Christmas decorations about the 5th of July. I'm convinced it gets earlier every year. I think I saw artificial trees in the aisle of one of the stores even before I spotted the thankful, grateful, blessed paper products for Thanksgiving maybe even before the Halloween masks were out. In my reflection on today's scripture, I came across this explanation of what it means to prepare the way. It said, to create a favorable environment or make it easy for one to come to you and operate in your life. What a great explanation. Consider this. Maybe that straight path the prophet Isaiah speaks of is a path straight to our hearts. This is where we create that favorable environment, not only for Jesus to be born, but to continue to reside. We need to focus our attention on making it easy for Jesus to come to us and to operate in our lives. Jesus comes, 
We just don't always make it easy. I want to suggest that one of the best ways for us to prepare during this season of Advent will be to develop the habit of making time to pause. Slow down, even to a full stop, and allow ourselves to become fully present in the moment. I can't really tell you how long to pause, only that I think it's important to do it frequently. Pausing really has two parts. One is sort of passive. It's where we stop, let go, breathe out. Imagine walking away from something or just putting something aside for a short time. Maybe we say to ourselves, I'm not going to do this right now. Maybe we give ourselves a time out. You know, just take a moment of rest. Catch your breath. Step away, mentally or physically. Put your to-do list down. The second part of the pause, it's a little more active. It's where we're trying to be more attentive, observant, curious. Look around. Breathe in. Open your eyes wide. Be aware and extra sensitive to what might be happening around you. Notice something new or extra. Take the time to appreciate someone or something that's right in front of you. If the main focus of our preparations for Christmas, if it's the decorating and the shopping and the wrapping and the baking and the menu planning and the social events, well, we might run the risk of losing sight of the true meaning of the season. It's critical that we frequently make a conscious effort to just pause and allow the space and time for grace-filled moments where we call to mind what it is that's most important. We can be gifted in those moments with a sense of peace, calm, clarity, rest. At our busiest, we are often doing more than we are being. Sometimes we humans are better at doing than being. Our doing space is necessary. It's where we work and achieve and accomplish and produce all good stuff. But in our being space, well, that's where we find prayer, touch, rest, wonderment, awe, music, and if we're lucky, maybe even a nap. We need to pause from doing so that we can just enjoy being a little more often. God didn't make us human doings. He made us human beings. When we hurry for things not yet in the present, sometimes we're unprepared for what is already here. Jesus is already here. As we work to prepare during this Advent season for Christ's coming at Christmas, we should bear that in mind. God always dwells among us in spirit. This year, might I suggest as you wrap presents or address Christmas cards, take time to say a short prayer of thanksgiving for those people and those friendships. When you're finished decorating your tree, stand back and take a moment to just admire its beauty. Maybe as you place baby Jesus beside Mary and Joseph in the manger, you could just marvel at the gift of human life. Pause and focus on the words of your favorite Christmas carol by listening just one time instead of singing along. There will be literally hundreds of opportunities for us to pause during the next few weeks. How many of those opportunities will we miss? And how many will we take advantage of?
Let us pray together the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, guide us to the moments of patience, the moments of silence, the moments of waiting. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, here's just a reminder that we have four more days of our Become an Angel campaign, and I'm overwhelmed at the generosity of our God Minute family. It's so incredible. So many of you have chosen to share your treasure so far. It is indeed humbling. As one lady wrote us with a monthly donation, this is a small token of my gratitude for how you have blessed my life in prayer. I love the God Minute. Thank you. Well, we love you too. So take a moment, go to becomeanangel.org and consider supporting the God Minute this year. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for all you do for us. Take good care of yourself and one another. And we'll see you tomorrow.